yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, the ball. So listen to Professor. Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Man, we're live on Radio Row here mm. in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Cricket Wireless Celebration Bowl. 2021. It's been two years. We're back. And we have two guests. We'll get them, bring them in shortly and, and get them to tell them a little bit about yourself. Um, Colonel Greg, let me, let me get that right in turn because he, he's looking the part. Yeah, hey, very much <laughs> so. <laughs> I wish I could be that clean. Captain Captain, Graham. Captain. Yeah, you know those titles in terms of the arm. You get it right there. They put it out there. Man, what you doing? You, you, you <laughs> earned that art? No, no, no. No problems. <laughs> Captain. Um, so with that going on, welcome to the show inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Mike is still on assignment. He's got um, delayed in terms of his flight. You know that, how that happens. So he'll be in here this evening, and we'll haze him a little bit there in terms of what that <laughs> looks like. Charles, tell him how you doing. Doing well, doing well. Uh, back here on Radio Row again. Uh, looking forward to an exciting Celebration Bowl. Uh, Jackson State 11-1 coming in. Uh, South Carolina State 6-5. and five. Uh, Plenty of matchups that we're going to get into during the course of the day, but a uh, uh, tremendously festive atmosphere from uh, the banquet last night at the College Football Hall of Fame uh, to uh, the teams uh, touring Coca-Cola. I mean, it has been a first-class uh, representation of the SWAC and the MIAC here at the Celebration Bowl. This is Dr. Ville, Inside the HBCU Sp Sports Lab. Welcome to Episode 221 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab, radio show and podcast, a special segment as we're on Radio Row, as you heard. The show is covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports. From institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-hosts, Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We're filming live Radio Row in the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. With that, let's get started. Bring on our guest officially. Uh, as we said, we have Captain Greg. Tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Hometown product of Florence, South Carolina. Uh, been in the Army now about 14 years. Uh, coming up on my 14th year. Thank uh, you for your service. I appreciate Thank your you. support. You. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, graduate of North Carolina A and T, Aggie okay. Pryor. Of course. <laughs> Pryor. Yes, indeed. Got my bachelor's in African American history. Uh, oh, boy. Attempted, you know, multiple attempts to play semi pro basketball. Playing for, you know, multiple all Army basketball, post teams. You know, just trying to stay in the groove. You, uh, what position did you play? Did you uh, play with that? Aggie program? Oh, yeah. Before Aggie, you went? Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. Aggie, <laughs> Aggie Hoops. Uh, so I went to A&T uh, 2006, 7, and 8. Graduated in 2008. Okay. Uh, got my, like I said, I got my bachelor's in African-American history. Uh, and then I joined the Army shortly after. Um, I enlisted in 2008 uh, for about four or five years. Then I went to OCS, uh, officer school graduate. And then now you see before you right now, company commander, Captain Greg from the recruiting company in Florence, South Carolina. Hey boy. Let me ask this question. How, how did uh, playing uh, basketball kind of prepare you for your career in the Army? Yeah. Honestly, just always given that, well, we have this, we have this terminology at A&T, what Aggies do. Mm. Um, and it's pretty I much know. where, you know, you, get, you give it all you got, no mm -hmm. matter what. And you, no, matter if you, no matter if you're facing adversity or you're just, just good at what you do. Sure. So it, it naturally prepared me for everything. A&T prepared me for anything the Army could offer to me. That's awesome. That's Charles Bishop there. Um, as we get back into it, let me go back a little bit in terms of growing up uh, in South Carolina State, 
South Carolina, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But you had the choice of South Carolina State, I'm sure, North Carolina a t <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the recruiting process. Who other may have been options out there for you? Well, I went on a couple visits coming out of high school. Um, so I went to a prep school in Texas after I left South Carolina my senior year. I went to uh, Heritage Christian Academy. Um, yeah, had yeah. one great teammate in Von Keaton We're Wafer. Very familiar. Uh, yeah, yep. Heritage Christian Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, my teammate, Von Wafer, Von Keaton Wafer, he played at Florida State. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he went to the pros. Um, it, it was a... It was it was not as much as you would believe. I mean, I went on a few visits. I went to Hampton. I went to uh, okay. uh, Florida State. I went to uh, what was it? Uh, Virginia University of Virginia, um, and then I injured my foot at one of the tryouts. Um, so I went to a JUCO um, back okay. in Texas, and then I got a what JUCO in Texas? Blinn College. Yep. I was, yeah. I was actually there the same year as Cam Newton. Cam Newton. That's yep. what I said. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Same yep. year he was so there. So I went to undergrad at Prairie View. Okay, so yeah, all yeah. that area, so very familiar. I, I live all in Houston about now. It. He lives in Houston now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I know all about it. So, so. went there, uh, left from there, and went to Lincoln Trail in uh, Robinson, Illinois. Um, and then from there, went to A and T full scholarship, two thousand six, seven, and eight. So awesome. how many full seasons did you have at A and T? Three. You had the three. Okay. Red so shirt, I redshirted my first year there um, Got because it. of the transition, and then I played my last two years. Good. So what kind of numbers you put up? Let's let's talk about the ball. I mean, I, I ain't gonna say I was no whole. No, you can still you got skill. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna try to say whether you all the fame. We just want to know what you what you do, what you working with. I mean, I'll say uh, because you know, of course, you got to work your way up and yep. build, build up to it. Uh, so I had, I had a decent. First year there, and then my senior year, we, it was just competitive. You know, it, it's, it's a lot of dogs around that campus. You believe it or not. Mm-hmm. So during that time, A and T was pretty competitive in terms of the MEAC. Oh, Obviously, yeah. you had your general North Carolina Central that rival with the Eagles as they were going through at Hampton, as you talked about. They were still in the conference at the yep. time. Yep. Uh, Morgan State, Bozeman, Morgan State. Ru- ruining time. So who, where were you in terms of the total facet of the men program ranking wise? Um, y'all finish so my first year there, uh, we finished number three, I believe, in uh, 2006. Uh, 2007, I think we finished. We we went to the MEAC championship. We yeah. played at the MEAC championship. We lost at the buzzer by two. Yeah, I remember that now. You, you can't, you, you can't forget that. Follow question? You uh, can't forget that. Yeah, that's heartbreaking. I know. I, I, well, I'm always curious about the dynamic in terms of you, you grew up in South Carolina, but you have all these HBCUs uh, between uh, North Carolina, of South Carolina, but just oh yeah, uh, you College Row. Yeah, just yeah. kind of navigating that space. What was that like uh, being from that part of the country? Oh man, uh, the HBCU environment in that area mm-hmm. is just overwhelmingly great. Uh, it just provides so much opportunity. Um, just awesome. to, like I said, meet different people. I have lifelong friends right now from sure. just being an A and T graduate. Sure. Um, that 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 environment is just different. It's, well, it's unexplainable how different it is. It's, it's the culture. No doubt about it. Let's speed it forward a little bit. Now you're here with the Celebration Bowl. Army is partnering with the Celebration Bowl, that part of it. But you talk about those long-lasting friends. Connect us in terms of those friendships, in terms of who you have with us as well. Well, uh, the Army and just being here is, is about diversity. The Army is about a diversity. We, you know, we're we're excited about being here, um, just just as a representation of what the Army can offer young African American males and females from these HBCUs. Mm. Me being a walking product of it, I can tell you from experience, it's just a great opportunity. Sure. You know, like Prairie View has our our ROTC Navy ROT, I mean program. Mm-hmm. Uh, no South Carolina State A and T has that as well. I'm oh yeah, not sure. You yeah, time yeah. playing basketball to do both. But. Yeah, A and T has it. Um, we used to be doing basketball uh, conditioning during preseason, and we'll see them out there running. I was like, Nah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> but you look at look at me now, and I'm like, Oh man, look at God, right? <laughs> hey. So connect that. How did this happen in terms of eventually? Look at you now. Well, uh, so I had a I had a great mentor in uh, a police officer back home, Terrence wow. Carraway. Um, he uh, got killed in duty a couple of years ago, um, but he I came home from college, graduated from college, and you know he was a prior service um, Air Force as well. So he pretty much you know he saw how uh, distraught I was about not being able to play professional after college or whatnot. Um, so I was at home. Uh, he pretty much walked me to uh, one of the recruiting stations and was like, make a decision. <laughs> um, but luckily, because I, I had the basketball background, um, he put me in contact with the All-Army Sports Program. 
um, where it allowed me to still be able to play basketball throughout my Army career, um, which I'll still continue to now playing for um, Fort Bragg's post team. So it, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely great. It's a great opportunity. So tell me a little bit of how you enjoyed the festivities thus far um, in terms of being connected with the event. Oh, man, it, it's just exciting. Um, so typically, you know, my alma mater, a and we always here. We're, we're always here um, being in the celebration mode. Um, so the, the culture, the environment, the energy, it, it never wavers, never wavers. Even if, without us being in here, Jackson State bringing about 60,000 people, selling out the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I'm, I'm looking forward to the game. Getting, yeah. getting on ground last night, seeing all these people, seeing the culture, seeing the energy. It, it, it's a whole, I, how do they say, a whole vibe. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, as they say, for the culture. For the culture. Uh, with that, obviously, you don't want to get too in this. Leaders make decisions, and you follow those decisions. Mm -hmm. Is there a part of you that kind of misses the fact that a and was not in the MEAC with the opportunity to be here? Uh, How do you kind of? I'll, I'll, I'll say this. That's fair. I'm always be MEAC. Okay. I'm That's a, fair. I'm, <laughs> always, I'm always be MEAC. Yeah. Um, whether you know whether the Aggies are represented here or not, we're still here in heart because this is our baby. Uh, like like Coach says, show me my money when we get that win. Of course, of course. <laughs> ah, that's of a classic. Course. That classic. Will, that will never go away. With classic. You. Who do you have here with you? <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself, Mr. Shannon. How you doing? Um, my name is Shannon Lindsay. I'm the advertising public affairs for um, Atlanta Recruiting Battalion, and we're under one major sponsors for uh, the MEAC Swag Celebration Bowl. So um, we invited. Uh, Captain Greg come down because of his experience with the uh, HBCUs and his experience with being an Army officer in that transition to relate to HBCUs and also playing in uh, a high level of sports. So we just saw that connection and how he can relate to being an Army officer and also playing in sports and being a, a world class athlete. So we invited him down to come down and just represent for the culture, as you guys said. Ah, so no doubt. We just wanted to make sure that he uh, came down to represent. Uh, even though he doesn't fall in our footprint, we represent the state of Georgia. Um, he's falls up on the South Carolina, but South Carolina is represented in the MEAC SWAT. So we, we wanted him to come down and participate. That's Makes awesome. sense. Well done. Well done. Uh, before we get you out of there, I know you have a busy schedule. I appreciate you taking your time with this. Ask you first, anything that you want to get out to the people that we may not have discussed, and then we'll follow up the same okay. question for you. Yep. Uh, one of the main reasons the Army partnership with the MEAC SWAG is because we want the Army to represent what the United States looks like, which is diversity. Um, and we're big on diversity in the United States Army. And having that um, Army representation, especially with our Army officership and that leadership, um, we need the Army to have that diversity in our leadership and growing our Army officers to be those generals, those leaderships, those people that are out front telling others what to do, how to follow, how to be... Uh, mentors in the United States Army. So that's one of the main reasons we partnership with the college atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that, that is one of the main reasons. And we want that diversity to continue to grow. I really appreciate that you yes, indeed. talk about it from that perspective, because oftentimes we don't share that history enough in terms of where we're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we are part of the legacy of this country, no matter what you look at it. In fact, you know, I have a direct connection with my grandfather, Jafus Pitt Cavill, um, senior, was the first Army ROTC graduate of Prairie View A&M University, first of two that graduated with that class um, at Prairie View in the 40s, uh, went over there. So I have a great and immense appreciation of what you all are doing protecting this country. Last comment there, go ahead. Um, so like he said about diversity, I, I, I take pride in being a walking product of j exactly that. Um, so being in my hometown, uh, I, I really, a lot of times when I'm speaking to the youth in the schools and in the community, I try to harp on the fact that I am a walking product of exactly what they're facing daily. Um, so I carry myself as such. Um, and just being able to show them, because you know, to, in today's age, these kids, they don't, they don't want to hear all the talk. Sure, you sure. got you to gotta show them. You got to show them. Yes, indeed. You got to show them success. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I stand on being a walking product of success from, from where I came from. That's awesome. I really appreciate not, it. Not a product of, uh, of my environment, right. but a product of what I stand for. Yes, indeed. That's and awesome. You stand well. We appreciate it. We stand with you. And, boy, you appreciate it. Again, thank you for your time. This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC showing you a little information about Captain Greg. I appreciate you. Um, Appreciate it. Well, take care. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Appreciate you.
Um, we'll take a quick break and then we'll get right back to it and get into some of the action and talk to see if we get some other ones. Uh, what was that you just did there? Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> oh, God, more alphas. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes, indeed. A5, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh, yeah, we're just Dr. Phil inside the HBC Sports <laughs> Lab. I'm going to take a break here. Hope you enjoy the interview there. We got a little excited there in terms of that. So go ahead. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Shop Velvet Online Women's Boutique to spice up your closet with trendy, unique looks. We have fashionable and chic looks at very affordable prices. Velvet Boutique offers free shipping all year long on all orders. Shop online at www.melvetboutique.com. That's www.melvetboutique.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Gaville with Inside HBC Sports Lab here on Radio Row in Atlanta, I started to say Houston. It's been a long week already. Yes, it did. Um, we're having um, guests setting up here, so we'll bring in Brig Brigadier General Davis. Yes, good some. morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? Awesome. Doing well, pretty good. Let's jump right into it. Tell All us right. a little bit about yourself. Why the Army? How did you get in uh, deciding to go to the Army? And before we do that, let me say thank you for your service. Oh, you're very welcome. So my name is Brigadier General Daphne Davis. I'm the Deputy Commanding General for Support for the United States Army Recruiting Command. Quite honestly, I uh, wish please. that I had joined oh. the Army out of some uh, patriotic convention, but it was all about the money when I started. I understand. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth, right? <laughs> I was a college kid, didn't want to work fast food, and they said, hey, if you take this class called ROTC, we'll give you $100 a month. Wow. Sign me up, and there, there I go. was. Look at it, and look where you are now. I know. You couldn't have told me this 30 years ago. 
Well, that, that's an interesting question because um, when you take a look at rising through the ranks uh, of the Army to, to uh, get to the position that you're at now, talk about that process and, and how you went about uh, making it happen. So I, I'll tell you that throughout my career, it's quite honestly, it's simple. Let God lead and keep plugging away. Mm. That's it. You know, hard work, due diligence. And one of the good things about the Army is that they do reward hard work and due diligence. Mm -hmm. You get rewarded and you get promoted, and here I am. Wow. Before we transition a little bit in terms of your experience uh, over this week in terms of the Celebration Bowl and, and why the connection and why, why that makes you, tell us, it's my understanding that you have a connection with HBCUs yourself a little bit. I do. I do. My baby boy is a HBCU college student today. He's a North Carolina A&T Aggie Pride. All right. and, uh, you guys are all over the place here. I, isn't that right? <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> and um, he's also signed up uh, for the ROTC program, and when he graduates and uh, finishes his degree in psychology, he'll be an Army officer as well. That's got to be a proud legacy to continue that. Oh, absolutely legacy. it is. As I shared with the last guest we had, uh, my connection with this, my grandfather was the far first of two Army ROTC graduates of Prairie View uh, when they started the program in the 40s. Oh, wow. So it's a huge legacy for me in terms of making that connection. Absolutely. So when we talk about that historically, um, where you are, it, you know, we don't always want to frame the history, but mm -hmm. in a lot of ways you're making history in terms of where you've been able to travel your path. Talk about the importance that may bring outside of yourself um, to the bigger picture. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, sometimes people ask me why I do it, and uh, besides the fact that I'm having fun, I do it because your grandfather did it, mm -hmm. right? Thank you. I did it for him. I did it for my grandfather, wow. and I do it for my son, mm -hmm. and I do it for all of those other brown and black young men and women that need to look up and see it's possible. It's possible, and I can do great things. I don't have to stay stuck. Sure. And that's why I do it. With that sporting context, are you a sports fan? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, don't ask me to pick between no, the you, teams. You, 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 I'm, I'm not going to do it. We don't do that here. <laughs> we do analysis, so we don't even pick. So you're, you're fine with it. All right. We just want to talk about what do you enjoy about the game? What do I enjoy about the game? Mm-hmm. I love football just because of the excellence. Those athletes on that field, when you talk about self-sacrifice that they've done to get to where they are, when you talk about discipline, boy, I see a brownie and I just, boy, it's hard for me to pass that brownie up. But those athletes out there on the field, their diet, their exercise, the discipline that they put in to become the, pro, the, the, the excellent athletes that they are, it's unreal. It's unreal to see them perform, and I just enjoy it. I don't, I don't feel as bad now because I, I can't know, pass I up a brownie. Up a brownie. <laughs> I, can't, I can't pass up a brownie. <laughs> what, what has your experience been here at the Celebration Bowl? Uh, what has my experience been? I have just had a blast. Just quite honestly, I have just had a blast. I'm here, I'm supposed to be working, and I'm like, this is too much fun. <laughs> this is too much fun. That's I'm just awesome. having a great time talking to people, and it's, it's just a joy to be here, and I'm, I'm honored that uh, we were invited to attend. No doubt about it. Um, we could hog all the times, so but I understand they also want to make sure that you can talk with some of the other radio roll folks. But so final question we have for you is anything that you want to share that we may not have asked in terms of just – to provide some information for those that are watching. Yeah, you know, what I would share is I, I often hear that the Army is not for a black man or the Army is not for a black woman, and, and I would have to say that that's uh, false. I would say that there's some misrepresentation out there, and I would say that uh, the Army in and of itself uh, highly values diversity. Uh, the Army is getting better at diversity every single day, and if we're walking away from that opportunity, we're failing ourselves. We're I, failing ourselves. I agree with that. I, I like the fact that you never know what people's facet in life and what direction they want to go. Absolutely. So all opportunities should be on the table. And we want to thank you again for your service. Thank you for representing us in terms of this country, us as people of uh, uh, African descent, and as a woman. So appreciate all that, that you do and will continue to do. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you both. This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBCU Sports Lab as we transition there, uh, get it going. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, exchanging some cards here. Yes, Appreciate uh, 
that information there. So before we get into some of this action as we're getting going, it seems like they're bringing some players in here for yeah, us to talk like to as well. So we in. get into action. How has your experience uh -huh. been here? Uh, it's been tremendous, Doc. I mean, when you stop and this think, is different for you. It, it's completely different for me. I mean, to uh, you know, be uh, come here and and my boyhood team is here uh, here at the Celebration Bowl, taking on South Carolina State. Uh, I'm just looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be tremendous. Uh, two great football teams, and and we have a guest here with us now, a member of the South Carolina State uh, football team. Introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Zafir Kelly. Zafir Kelly, defensive back for South Carolina State, three interceptions thus far on the season. You bad uh, boy. You bad man. Yes. Welcome in. Welcome yeah. in. Welcome thank, to Dr. Field inside the HBC Sports Lab. Thank tell you, us you. tell us a little bit about how did you end up getting to South Carolina State? Let, let's start from there and you can even tell us where you're from. Uh, um I'm originally from Syracuse, New York, but I moved uh -huh. to South Carolina a couple years ago. Okay. Like, as a kid. So um I ended up at South Carolina State. They uh they came in, you know, my school during weightlifting out of nowhere. So once they came, I did my research on them. I already heard about them through prior athletes like that went to the league. So once they sent me the offer, I was like, yeah, I'm going here. Like the history, the legacy, and everything that the prior athletes done paid for this. So I wanted to follow in that. So how's the experience sound like it's been good the way you talk about it, but how has the experience been? <laughs> it's great, man. I mean, it's HBCU life. Uh, like I say, <laughs> I the, the athlete, culture. Yeah. yeah, the culture, man. And so, like, the prior athletes, like Darius Leonard, I got the opportunity to play with him starting my freshman year. So wow. it, it was it was great seeing him, like, do what he do. And then now he in the league, one of the highest paid linebackers. So. That was really like great just to see the culture still going and they paid the way for us. Speaking of that, that uh, South Carolina State culture, that tradition, uh, South Carolina State doesn't take a backseat to any uh, school in terms of uh, the pride and the tradition for NFL Hall of Famers. But uh, talk about playing in a program like that. Um, it's great, man. It's really, like, we, like you said, we don't take a backseat to nobody. So it's like, it's a standard. It's really a standard. You know, we. We put a lot of defensive players in the league, so you know, defensively we we got a standard, and we try to hold that standard across the board. Sure, I like playing to that standard. Uh, before we open up the mic and you can introduce that, I want to ask you: Is there any story you can tell us about Leonard? Oh man, maybe <laughs> <laughs> you went on TV. Where now, do we so. start? <laughs> yeah, nah, uh, man. If anybody know D, D, D a clown, but on that field, <laughs> he a maniac. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, we, we got a chance to see him up close in the Miag Swag uh, Challenge when uh, South Carolina State played Southern uh, yeah. down at Baton Rouge. I mean, you talk about flying around all but, over the place. Yeah, yeah and this is way better when you're on the field. You get the view of it. It's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that. Who do you have with us? Uh, this our D coordinator, Jonathan Saxon. Oh, Slappy. this ought to be good. Coach. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> Coach. How you guys doing? I'm, I'm going to say coach. I ain't going to use turn there. I don't know you like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, coach, tell us a little bit about, first, this young man. Uh, it's a fear, man. It's, I've known him since a freshman. I got to see him grow. And, you know, awesome. this is one of my guys I'm close to. You know, <laughs> seen him grow, start as a freshman, and just, you know, matriculate through the process. That's pretty amazing. Coach, you guys have had a, a formidable schedule this past season, uh, taking on the FBS opponents as well as some SWAC opponents. But, uh, is there a team uh, that Jackson State sort of reminds you of? Uh, that Clemson style, spread you out. It's a mixture between Clemson, Alabama, a and FAMU. Throw it around all over the place and can run the football. You know, they're an explosive team. They do a great job getting their playmakers in space and letting them make plays. Uh, you know, I've been taking notes watching you guys left and right here. Uh, playmakers all over the place. Chad Gilchrist, uh, B.J. Davis. Zafir here, and then of course, uh, Dakobe Durant. Just talk about the, the the secondary that you guys have. You, uh, you guys have two of the best in HBC ball. Uh, we put a lot of pressure on them. You know, we, we tell our guys all the time the secondary and defensive line and front seven go hand in hand. Mm. You know, you can't do anything if the secondary is not covering, and you can't do anything if you're not getting a pass rush up front. Sure. So anytime you hear me, I always talk about all 11. I mean, I'll tell you in practice, all 11 to the football. Yeah. You can't do anything without each other, and that's what we, we preach about a brotherhood and having each other's back. Sure thing. Let me follow that up. I know you can't give us the game plan. I mean, you can't, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
breaking news here first. But seriously, in schematics, what are some frameworks? What are some things that you want to get done in this contest? So our, our philosophy at South Carolina State, even when I played here for coach, is stop and run. You don't stop running at all costs, but at the same time, we play our game. You play within your framework. You never want to step out. You do the things that's got you here. You know, I've always, I'm a man of routine. I work for Coach Strong at Louisville. He's a routine, man of routine. You want to stick to your routine and just keep working. Great point. Back to you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying, is there something that jumps out about you with regards to this Jackson State offense? Uh, you gotta, you gotta limit the big plays. You know, if you see them, yeah. you know they're gonna keep coming no matter where. Cool. That's what makes them great. You know, like I said earlier, one of the early interviews, they're one or two plays away from being 12 and 0. And you go to Monroe game. You know, they're a great team. They, they built this team to be explosive and play hard. And you see it on film day in and day out. In terms of you playing in the game, um, and then I'm gonna ask you something outside of the game. In terms of watching film, obviously you don't get into certain detail, but what are some things in your game that you like to see? Are there some things that you think you can get done or that you would like to get done in the game? And in a framework, what does that look like? Um, the things I see that I could do in my game, definitely they like to take deep shots. I like, I know definitely in my game, that's something I catch, I catch my picks off, deep shots. Okay. So. I mean, I'm going to try to, you know, stay in my game, stay poised, you know, do what I do. How have you enjoyed the experience, the bowl experience? Let's get back uh, to the cultural side of this. It so much brings that smile that I see in your face. How have you enjoyed this? Uh, it's great, man. Like I said, uh, I've never been in anything like this. I never played past, I mean, played past the regular season. So with me being a senior and me being able to, you know, play in all of this and view all of this is crazy like awesome. I called my mom since we've been here just like mom uh, this crazy <laughs> like I ain't never been a part of nothing like this but I definitely appreciate it and I mean we work for it so last great. question I have for both of you and we'll ask this and then you can follow if you want a couple more questions there um how proud are you to bring coach buddy Pew to this you know as he talked about that he was chasing this after he decided hey this is something I want to do I'm sure there's a level of pride in terms of how historic he has been to this program. Um, to be straightforward with you, at one point, we kind of like tried to bury him. He kicked the dirt off. He said, no, we're not done yet. Um, talk about that, if you would. Um, we've been trying to really get here since, what, 19? We, we came up short in 19. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's great to actually, like, get him here. He deserves it. That's right. You really look at what he done done for the program, for himself, for just in general, it's like, it's great. You see how many people he done put in the league, not many coaches could say they doing that. So, to get him here, he deserved that. And we did that. Yeah, that's a player perspective from a coaching perspective. And it means a lot. Because I played for him and uh, when I'm coaching for him, it means everything. This is one of our goals. He always wanted to get here, you know, into the playoffs. and. It's another standard for them, you know. We're not here just to be here, you know. We want to, you know, like you say, you want to finish it off the right way and win the game. But it means everything to us as a staff. That's one of our goals we set as a staff that we wanted to get coach here. And he, you know, we accomplished it. But you know, a job not done until you finish it. So, you know, coach, they say the old boxing axiom styles make fights. Like, what what do you think is the difference between the MEAC style of football and SWAC uh, brand of football? You know, the SWAC style they throw it all over the park. There are there are a lot of explosive offenses. They're more so spread, you know, but they can do whatever you need with us in the MEAC it is a lot more run style take a couple deep shot here and there so at the same time we both have the similar athletes because you in recruiting we'll run into each other and recruit in the sure. same style so mm -hmm. you know the swag are they have a lot of explosive offense from AM, and FAMU uh, Jackson State you see the style of four wise three by one two by two and throw it all over the park run football you see it so mm -hmm. but that's the dead game we in now you see it all over the place because you remember Alabama started off in two back sets running it down everybody throw a couple years ago to now they're switched to spread. From a from a defensive perspective, is it harder nowadays stopping these offenses that, that spread you out and make you play in space? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Because you you know they they put you in a mind where if you loosen up the box to where it's only five man box, you're gonna hand the football off. Mm -hmm. So you gotta kind of configure your ways to help the guys out. But you also just like offenses put their guys in the best possible position. We try to do a defense coach put our guys in the best possible position also. Sure, sure. Well, I want to say thank you both of you for your time. Uh, good luck this Saturday. Yes, Go Bulldogs like we 
like to say uh, each of the coaches and players that are represented. So good luck this weekend. Good luck. I will like to give you a chance. Any last things that you want to say to the audience out here before you go for it? It got to be in you, not on you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I've heard that a couple of times. I like that. <laughs> That's what they live by, but. And we appreciate all the support from everybody, man. I think this event can be huge. You know, we keep on getting support for all HBCUs, man. I think it's going to be big if we continue to do it. So, Well said. Well, well said. said. Yes, indeed. This is Dr. Gaville inside the HBCU uh, Sports Lab interview with South Carolina State Coach Saxon. And uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this break. This is Dr. Gaville inside the HBCU Sports Lab. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slowburn. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge, it's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place, a space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slowburn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they won, you tap. Uh, I'm going to do the dab, yeah. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Coles Brown Show and Black College Sports Network. Online at www.mybcsn.net. And on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to lock that and who the ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, because he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside HBC Sports Lab. We're live here in the Celebration Bowl at Radio Row. Uh, we've been talking to some Army officials, and then we get a chance to talk to some Bulldogs, South Carolina State Bulldogs, representing uh, the MEAC in the Celebration Bowl. Uh, we got a young man here, Green. Yes, sir. Defensive end, big boy. You can see it on film. It looks like he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> so... Tell everybody where you're from first, and then we'll get into some particulars in terms of how you get to South Carolina State. Uh, I'm from Lamar, South Carolina. Ah. Yes, sir. And, and talk about how did you get to South Carolina State? Uh, that was like my only offer coming out of high school. So, I mean, when I took the visit, it was like a family environment, and I needed that at that time. Awesome. And then once I got on campus and realized this is where I wanted to be, I bought into the system and locked in. Yeah, tell us a little bit about it, that experience during that time. During that time, I was a young kid, just blessed to have an opportunity to play at this level. So, I mean, with that, go ahead. <laughs> with that, I mean, it was just a great experience for me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's huge. Talk about uh, going up against this Jackson State offensive line. What have you seen uh, with regards to them on, on film? I mean, doing them is what got them where they're at now. So, I mean, all praise to them and their offensive line. Sure thing. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, you guys have faced some, some stiff competition this year, uh, but is there a team that, that you would kind of compare this Jackson State team to? If I want to compare, I would say Norfolk. Okay. With the flashy offense and the high-scoring offense, high-scoring points, mm -hmm. I'll give it to Norfolk. Sure thing, sure thing. 
Before we get in the coach, I did want to ask you in terms of your style of play. Yes, sir. Do you have a pattern of somebody you're patting yourself? Or are there certain things about that stand out to you in terms of your style of play? No, I just do what I've always been doing. Just <laughs> <laughs> playing fast, playing physical. That's I like that. It. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Um, question I have for you as we have Coach Pugh here. Talk about <laughs> the fact that you had a chance to bring him in terms of your play, getting it done as a team to the celebration pole. How does that make you feel? I mean, it made me feel great, but it wasn't just me. It was the whole D-line, the whole linebacking core, That's the right. whole DB core. We just play as one. We don't do the name calling, who the best, who. It's just one, one group. He had a lot to do with it, though, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> he was real big in the reason we're here. <laughs> Jump in there, Coach. Tell us a little about this man. He, you can see he's singly focused. Uh, not a lot of words in terms of letting the play speak for itself. But why is he so special to you? Well, I can tell you that I beat our defensive coaches up. Mm. Because Jablons can be over on the sideline by me. I said, hey, man, what the heck y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> I said, put his ass back in the game. <laughs> I said, what are y'all doing, man? So, you know, he's a little bit of, and, and we actually had him down there with us some during the spring. And you know, it was the first time I would got the chance to watch him every day for a while. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed in a way that I didn't feel like I would be impressed. So, yeah, yeah. You know, the guy was developing right before our eyes that way. And you know, he's a Lawrence Taylor kind of, you know, size guy, you know, with a, you know, with a, uh, uh, almost a defensive back kind of quick twitches to it. Yeah. That kind of stuff. yeah. So he's a, you know, he's a fast guy. He's a big old guy. And uh, what is he about two? He thinks they haven't listed two sixty five, six three red shirt sophomore. He, uh, he but he, that, I don't know. He, he I see a lot more. <laughs> he is at least that. Okay. Right. <laughs> at a minimum, it's conservative. I, I think he, if he I, and the Kobe Durant's a hell of a football player. No, no, no. And they're from some, and they're from the same place. Actually, from right over the same neck of woods. And I can tell you that. I think for my money, Jablonski right now is playing as good as anybody in the country. That's all right. So let's, tell me a story about Coach. Let's, let's get the good. No, you know, they, they, <laughs> 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 well, never mind. <laughs> I tried. I tried this. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you know, Coach Pugh, uh, there's a, a, a long tie-in uh, with South Carolina State and Jackson State. Uh, Coach uh, James Big Daddy Carson, of course, uh, was on the coaching staff at South Carolina State. Please, Melvin please. P. Uh, all, I knew all of those guys. Yes, sir. Coach Carson was my deep. I came to South Carolina State as a defensive lineman. Yes. And wasn't good enough. Yes, wow. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, so they move, that's that, like we do all the time, we move, off, we move, we move defensive line over the offensive line because we tried to find guys still with a little bit of athleticism but not quite good to play on the defensive side. But uh, that's what happened with me. And I went over wow. and played, started on for four years at South Carolina State as an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. But now uh, Coach Carson was a wonderful human being. Yes. And I got a chance to stay in contact with him over the years after he left Orangeburg to move to Jackson. And uh, his wife, you know, we were all friends. You know, doing it. Now, now, I didn't know Coach Pete quite as well, mm -hmm. but he was a swimming coach and some other stuff around South Carolina State. When, and I was a little boy running around the town that way. So sure, those sure. guys were all legends yeah. around Osbury. And uh, there's some others too. We had some guys that went back to, to uh, Grambling, okay. you know, down there too. So there were all kinds of guys, you know, who came to South Carolina State who moved back to the SWAC in their older parts of their lives. Sure. Uh -huh. Amazing history. Amazing history. Yeah. want to ask you. Before I get back to coach, in terms of the atmosphere, how have you felt about this event thus far? Um, just being here is amazing because I've never been to Atlanta. So just being here is amazing. So us playing in this atmosphere, knowing it's sold out, is great and all, but we can't let it get to us. Mm. We done played in some big spots before, like UCF, USF, Clemson, New Mexico State. So, I mean, it being sold out here is just another game to us. That's right. That's the attitude that you really need to go into a game like that. Back to you, Coach, in terms of you, you made a statement in terms of originally this is not necessarily the direction you thought the conference should go. Could you share a little more? I mean, we kind of just did a surface level, obviously. Uh, and I know 
how you go through a process. So that wasn't something that you just easy came to. So please kind of explain, you know, the full circle about all it. Well, oh, I guess it's been now 15 years ago. Dr. Thomas brought this idea to us about the Celebration Bowl. At the time, it didn't even have a name, right. and we had no idea where we were going to play it and how we'd actually determine oh, okay. who went from where. All we knew at that point was the fact that we would not no we would no longer be a part of the championship subdivision playoffs. And all of the uh, the, the message boards and all the internet stuff out there was y'all scared of the general population of people. Y'all scared of the major white uh, championship subdivision yeah. schools that yeah. kind of stuff. So y'all running from the real competition. So rather than allow that to be you know the message that we were actually trying to support at that time. Then we just kind of fought it and just wouldn't hear, you know, the message. Well, eventually we got a chance to get snubbed a couple of times by the playoffs. We felt that we were mistreated that way. And then we got in That's the playoffs really a couple yeah. times. We got in the playoffs a lot of times, actually. Right. And they always ranked. And we we lost to Appalachian at Appalachian two years in a row. But Appalachian was like the number one seed. Yeah. And we were like 60 by less than a touchdown. Yeah. Right. So, you know, they beat us one year up there where we had we, – we kicking a field goal to actually go ahead. I watched that game. Exactly. And we stepped the ball over our guy's head. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. our guy was not – they did a, a false signal on their side of the line of scrimmage and got our snapper to snap the snap early, yeah. And they didn't call it. left a sour taste in my mouth, I'm telling you. From, I'm sure. So from that point on, then we said, well, you know, this thing doesn't seem to really be working out for us. They don't give us but one opportunity. If we not have one opportunity, then why not try to see if we can actually do something that can make a few bucks for us. Sure, way, sure. And be something that our fans will have a little bit better feel for us. So we started kind of, you know, kind of softening on the idea. Dr. Thomas brought Pete Dursa in from the uh, uh, ESPN. Uh, ESPN to actually talk to the coaches and see if he could get the coaches to kind of go in that direction a little bit. It took us a year or so to get that kind of half the way going a little bit. And then he started softening the presence a little bit. And he just kept working and working. It. And it was, you know, more from our side because the SWAC had the availability yeah. of going and, and, and making this thing happen all the time because they did not have anything that would preclude them from being able to play a game. Yeah, had the SWAC championship game. Exactly. Yeah. All that stuff had already kind of ruled them out yeah. of the playoffs. And then we figured out that we could actually give up our automatic qualifier and still have the opportunity for the rest at of large. our league yeah. to get at large opportunities. So we had a couple of situations where that, I think when Central won it, A&T won, yeah. this year worked out with FAMU doing yeah. the same thing. I was really proud of FAMU for getting, you know, for getting in this year because that just kind of showed the full method of what the plan was about that sure. way. So then that gave us a chance to get this thing going. And now that we've done this, let me tell you what, you talk to some of the people in the Southern Conference, you talk to some of the people in the Ohio Valley. One of the Ohio Valley ADs is here. This okay. Weekend. That, okay. His, his I'm glad you shared it. It's actually on our staff. And I can tell you that they form with that lift. They, really, and they can figure out. <laughs> And they can figure out how to, when you start talking about the amount of money that's involved in this thing and the amount of excitement, yeah. you know, the, the, just the general makeup of how this thing works out, man, let me tell you, if you can find the site, okay, which is what really, you know, makes it go for us, the fact yes. that we got Atlanta here kind of in between us, you know, that just makes it a wonderful, you know, meeting place for the two fan bases to kind of come together. Now, we, I don't know what happens. When say Texas Southern, right? Uh, that's Prairie View, maybe even you know we were really rooting. And let me tell you something: we needed Prairie View to be in this game because Prairie View wasn't nearly as hot as Jackson. <laughs> but let me tell you something: all we wanted was Jackson, and Truth, the reason sir. we wanted the Jackson was because we had enough sense to understand that it was more about the finances than the game yeah. itself, mm. promoting the game and getting it to the point where you know it became a bigger and better opportunity for us to make you know, a big, big deal out of this thing. So I'm excited that I'm involved with it as it really goes to the next level. And I really feel like, you know, that it's been something that's been long coming, but it's going to, I think, really get bigger and bigger from this point on. We, we talk before, about... Before you do, I got to say one thing. Go for it. Uh -huh. First of all, thanks for going in that level of detail because we really need that yeah. out here so our viewers mm -hmm. understand all the things. And I think it also helped in terms of the negotiation. The oh, fact I that you didn't jump on it, it expanded exactly. the amount yeah. that went to the table. So that worked out as well. And exactly. lastly, I want to say is while we're proud of FAMU, 
South Carolina State should have been in the playoffs a well, couple, couple years ago. Oh, yeah. 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 And it, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, I, I wanted to talk about the, the growth of Celebration Bowl uh -huh. and uh, Dennis Thomas is, uh -huh. is getting ready to retire. But mm -hmm. what has Dennis Thomas meant to the the mid Mid-East Mid Athletic Conference? Well, you know, he brought it from where it was to where it is now, mm -hmm. and and he's continued to have it and be a place where you know schools can go out and be proud of the fact you know that our league has run really really well, and uh, you know we've done some cutting edge kind of things to make. We've been the leader in, in, in things like technology. You know, we will, we still, we've got eight officials now with a lot of other championship subdivision leagues. You know, only got seven. You know, we the big time in the instant replay. We were ahead of the game a little bit. Yes, you were. And, and, and the officials, technology, when the guys got all the headsets, all that kind of stuff. So he's always Ingratiating women into oh, exactly. uh, on the officials. He's, exactly. He's got women involved, and he's got women involved in his staff that way. So Sonya now uh -huh. is coming into the position as the commission that way based upon the fact that she was his top uh, understudy you know as a as a commission for a good many years so he's been a forward thinker from the very beginning he's a smart guy I yeah, mean, yeah. But all of, and he's a swag product so I guess I got to give him a little bit of credit <laughs> for the fact that he's an all corn guy he's an all corn guy exactly yeah. but he was the head football coach at South Carolina State that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that. Don't forget that. Exactly. Forget that. Exactly. Make sure you teach that history. Yes, it is. And the real important part about all football coaches, especially football coaches, yes, is sir. we seem to be more students, you know, of our game. We really want to try to do whatever we can to stay on the cutting edge of all. So we exchange film. We've got uh, allegiances going with the NFL, but we I get every NFL game in on Tuesday every week of all the games that was played that I get the, the end zone, the, the sideline, and I get the TV copy wow. of all those videos. And that's a Dennis Thomas coalition deal that he's put together so that we can actually be able to see all of the hot things that's going on. So I can, if all I got to do is have the time and the energy to go through all that tape because it's all out there on my video system at home. It's yeah, awesome. they're telling us that you got to go. We talked to you all day, but I do want to say this. Any last thing that you want to say to us? Uh, no, nah, just grateful to be here. Thank y'all for having me. No, it's our pleasure. We appreciate Thank all you. that you're doing uh, for South Carolina State and um, HBCUs. We really appreciate you. You get a chance to talk to a guy here now. This guy going to be <clears throat> down the road to peace. Watch it. Keep appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. Yeah, appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you, Coach. This is Dr. Ville inside the HBCU Sports Lab. You just heard it from Coach Pugh uh, Brown to Green in terms of a uh, young one, but he's up and coming. Uh, they got him listening to 65263. Um, 265, but no, he he doing that and that handshake is, is uh, real deal too. That's a too. death grip. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's getting it done yeah, in, yes, in terms indeed. of what's going on there. We're gonna take this uh, break uh, as we get into it, um, and uh, we'll be back on the other side and see if there's a couple of other ones we can get in there and get to you some interviews. We got John Grant out there. We we'll see if we can get him potentially. So let's get into this break, and we'll we'll be right back after this. Doctor is inside the HBC Sports Lab. On Radio Road here in the Omni, Celebration Bowl 2021, Cricket Wild. 200 Wilder. years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Sugar Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single-serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good 
Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download we look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique to spice up your closet with trendy, unique looks. We have fashionable and chic looks at very affordable prices. Melvin Boutique offers free shipping all year long on all orders. Shop online at www.melvinboutique.com. That's www.melvinboutique.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach you. And welcome back into Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Live to you here from Radio Row here at the Celebration Bowl. Uh, we've had a tremendous number of guests uh, who have stopped by here uh, at the dais. And, and we have another guest, South Carolina State running back Kendrell Flowers. Uh, welcome in to Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Thank you for having me. I, I tell you what, man. Um, one thing that the MEAC is known for is known for running the football. And you have been a uh, tremendous uh, running back this past season for South Carolina State but but talk a little bit about your celebration bowl experience how's that been for you uh it's been a good experience um couldn't really enjoy the city too much you know we here for one one reason one goal mm -hmm. but um the city of Atlanta is beautiful man this is actually like my first time coming here so mm -hmm. I definitely come back and visit no doubt no doubt uh, you guys have had a, a formidable schedule. I mean, you've had uh, FBS opponents, uh, SWAC opponents, but uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you see in this Jackson State team. Is there a team that they compare to? Um, I'll probably say FAM. Okay. FAM, you, um, I know they had a pretty close game. Um, both of them got um, great defenses, mm -hmm. so i probably compare them to them. Sure. Uh, you rushed for 811 yards this past season. Talk up a little bit about your offensive line and what they've been able to get done for you. Uh, my offensive line been great, man. Um, we got better as the year went. Mm -hmm. um, they made my job way, way easier. Sure. So I'm always grateful for that. Yeah. We just had your head coach here, Buddy Pugh, uh, talking to us. What, what's it like playing for Coach Pugh, man? Uh, playing for Coach Pugh, man, it's wonderful. Yeah. I've only known him for about a year now. but. Uh -huh. um, he cares about all of his players. We love playing for him. Um, and when you have a coach that believes in you and, you know, wants to see you succeed, I feel like you play harder. So sure. we're going to continue to play hard for him. Sure. One thing that we've seen here at the Celebration Bowl, there was an early signing period, uh, a lot of – three, four-star, five-star athletes are now uh, looking at HBCU uh, football. But from a player's perspective, you know, uh, what do you think in regards to uh, this influx, uh, if you will, of players that are looking at HBCUs now? I mean, I think it's a good step for mm -hmm. college football. Um, I love to see more highly rated guys come play mm -hmm. for HBCUs. Um, coming from a PWI, you can – you could just tell the difference in HBCUs. The culture is different. Hmm. You know, the um, your teammates, 
the coaches, the teachers, professors, you know. So I advise everybody to look into HBCUs at least because you can definitely find a good one that fits you. Well, that leads me into uh, what led to you going to South Carolina State. Um, they, they had a legendary program. You know, I wanted to be a part of that. Um, playing at home, it's no better feeling than playing at home, you know, having your loved ones in the crowd cheering you on. So that was a big uh, reason why I came here. Sure thing. Well, I, I know you're pressed for time. Is there anything you want to tell your South Carolina State Bulldog fan? Hey, man, pull up and show out. There it is. Yeah, no that's doubt. all I got to say. Man, I appreciate you stopping by the lab. Man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. No doubt. That was Kendra Flowers. He is running back for South Carolina State. Uh, he will take on this formidable Jackson State defense, and we'll come right back here on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy, 'cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back in to Dr. Gavilles inside the HBCU Sports Lab, coming to you live from Radio Row here on uh, here at the Omni Hotel here at the Celebration Bowl. As Doc selfies himself up here. <laughs> Say, man, you never know. There you go. Get, get it in. in. Get it in. <laughs> All right, back to business. Dr. Gavilles inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Thank you for holding up for me. You know, hey, man, it's been a long couple of days, yes, and we're just sir. getting started. Yes. But I have a good friend of mine and of the show in terms of the supporter. Uh, but he's here not just to be celebration, but he actually has a great celebration. His father is going into the SWAC Hall of Fame. This is none other than Dr. Roderick Holmes. Talk about your dad. Tell him everybody who doesn't know. Who is your dad? Uh, my dad is Ernie Holmes, uh, still currently a, a member, you know, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, two-time Super Bowl champion, so, you know, uh, yeah, you don't have to have say much more than that. That's <laughs> hey, what, what you <laughs> said, <laughs> Steel Curtain, <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah, that's yeah, enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Texas yeah, Southern yeah. University's yeah, own. Yes, sir. Um, tell me this before we get into just how proud you are, but right. how cool is it to teach at the institution that your father played and really cultivated his skill before he went to the NFL, became a part of that legendary Pittsburgh Steelers Super Bowl championship team. Man, it is amazing. Like I said, my, my dad actually used to take me on campus with, with him when I was two years old. And so uh, he, he credits that with me becoming a, uh, getting a PhD in mathematics. I'm a professor in the Department like of it. Mathematical Science. And he says that apparently I was paying attention and I learned some things <laughs> <laughs> while I was sitting in the classroom. But it is amazing I get to carry on his legacy, even though his legacy was in the a uh, athletic arena. I get to carry on in the academic arena, and so I get to mentor kids. Awesome. I get to uh, uh, help them get to their to their goals and fulfill their goals. So it's, it's a, it is awesome. Well said. Well said. That. How heavy is that? A PhD in mathematics? My God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is it is very heavy. It's not that many of us. Uh, I'm, I'm one. You talking about that's a unicorn? You know, yeah, you like a this unicorn? unicorn? Exactly. That's, that's a, unicorn. a unicorn. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm one of four to get a PhD from the, in, in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Houston. Uh, and uh, see, Dr. Willie, see, Dr. Willie Taylor was second. Dr. Evelyn Thornton, who was a, was a longtime professor at Prairie, Prairie. was sec was first. 
And then my good friend. She's why I did the uh, applied masters in the mathematics right. okay. computation. Okay. Right. Um, I did all the coursework, didn't do the thesis because that's the only thing they had. And right. I, I had a job opportunity I couldn't right. let go, and right. I ended up finishing masters, but not the math. That, that's understandable. It's, that happens a lot where people get into a doctoral program or a graduate program, and because of you know career uh, detours, if you will. Uh, they have to pursue those opportunities. Sure. You can't, you can't, because it takes a lot of sacrifice and commitment to work on a PhD. I mean, I made like fifteen hundred dollars a month for seven years while pursuing a PhD. And uh, you know, luckily my mom, she's like, hey, you know, as long as you're going for uh, the doctorate, you can stay at my house for free. And of course, my daddy was very supportive. Um, I'm very nervous because, you know, when you get a PhD, you have to um, take a qualifying exam, mm -hmm. all right? And so you take a qualifi qualifying exam on, like, three areas of math. And so the day of my qualifying exam, you know, my dad's calling me, like, you know, yeah, we're going out to David Buster's and celebrate, you know, you getting this um, milestone. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, dude, I haven't passed <laughs> <But, laughs> Oh, that lets you know how proud he was you know, of you and – how he played the game in a lot of ways. Right. You know, he was he was all in it. That, right. That's what he was. He right. believed what he thought he'd get it done. And a lot of times he doesn't necessarily get the credit he deserves because right. of the position he played. Exactly. It's it's a lot more celebrated now than it is then. Right. But you're talking about all those other Hall of Famers that are around him. Right. There's no way that they get the accolades he gets in right. terms of him point. not doing schematically what he needs to do. Right. Exactly. So I'm so excited that at least at this level, and hopefully the other one comes as well, but the SWAC right. Hall of Fame is there. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Well, like, like you said, he played defensive tackle. And unfortunately, um, uh, Hall of Fames have become more like skill position Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. you know, where you, 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 you roar to people, just, you know, catch a lot of touchdowns and throw a lot of touchdown passes, or you play defensive end, outside linebacker, and you accumulate a lot of sacks. But defensive tackles, that's not their job. Mm -hmm. You know, even though my dad did lead the Steelers in sacks twice mm. in 74 and in 75 with 11 uh -huh. and 8.5. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. Put it out there. Put it out there. <laughs> right. But he played defensive tackle. And, when, you know, when you play defensive tackle, your first job is to stop the run first. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. to take on blockers so that the linebackers will be free up to make tackles. And so it's hard to quantify, you know, uh, the – what a, the, the, what Other I, than to me, qualifying about the success the team had. Right. Yeah. Part exactly. of your qualifying has to be that you point out that right. this team had a high level of success, and the reason they had a high level of success is certain players right. did certain things that right. allowed other players to be at exactly. the level they are. Exactly. I do want to follow up, and I'll let Charles have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you no, know, your schedule is busy and moving around because they got you doing all these different <laughs> right. uh, yes, things. Sir. But th yes, that's sir. cool. You deserve that, and I'm so proud of you, the yes, fact sir. that you're carrying on that legacy. Yes, sir. Let's talk a little bit, because this is the SWAC Hall of Fame. Right. Talk a little bit about his career at Texas Southern um, that you either remember or now have read and have engulfed. Well, unfortunately, I have not been able to find a lot of stats. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. talking to some of the people that played with him, uh, they said that he was a man on campus, you know. Uh, they, they, won a, <laughs> they won a SWAC title, even though it was co-champion in 1968. With, they shared it with Alcorn and Gramlin. Uh, they went to the, they went to Lorman and, and beat Alcorn. And he beat, they beat Marino Castle, who was a yeah, future Hall of Famer. Yeah, we didn't exactly. know it yet yeah. in 1968. Right. Yeah. You know, and then, but they never could beat Gramlin because, you know, you got another Hall of Famer, you know, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ralph you know, Cooper talks about that all the time. He's dropping the dude, and he just right. dropped just like that. It's all well, you know. Right, exactly. Right. My right. dad played when they were. Right. Yeah. Right. But, you know, we we have to be thankful for to Bill Nunn because Bill Nunn pretty much convinced the Steelers to go out and, you know, recruit the sweat. Mm -hmm. uh, LC is a 10th round draft pick, LC uh, Greenwood. Yeah. Ernie is an 8th round uh, draft pick, but, you know, they became legends as part of the steel curtains, you know, because, you know, you know, like Dion flipped the guy. Uh, yep. Right. But you know, the HBCUs used to be furlough recruiting ground back in back in that during that time. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. Right. Right. Hey, let me ask this question uh, because uh, 
the Pittsburgh Steelers brand is such a national yes, sir. brand. There are people Steel that are, yeah, exactly, the Steelers nation. But to kind of be within that family and be embedded within that family, how, how is that? How was that? Uh, you know, growing up in Houston, you know, still the nation was just starting, but it was it was very hard for me growing up in Houston. Because, I can imagine, you know, because yeah. back then the Steelers and the Oilers were in Love the same Blue. division, <laughs> not, right. not the same. They were in the same conference, but they were in the same di di division. So, I didn't realize it. Mm. Yeah, so the Steelers played the Oilers twice. You know, mm. you know, and so I used to go to the dome and watch my dad play, and then had to go <laughs> back to school. You know, even though I was in elementary school. You know, and have to face the wrath of the other fans being dejected because they lost to the Steelers. You know, so yeah. and and then I couldn't do anything wrong because it's like you know, uh, you know, all my teachers, you know, graduated from TSU or were familiar with my dad, and so they were like, "I'm gonna tell you that you get out of line." So, mm -hmm. it was, but it was fun time. You know, I I, I had Steeler jersey, Steeler jacket, Steeler everything, went around the neighborhood, and uh, yeah, but everybody on on, on yeah. Gypsy Lane back in Houston. They are very uh, proud and happy. I can just imagine because you you could have been in that Mean Joe uh, Coke commercial. I, I probably could. I probably should have. You <laughs> right, know, right. Some <laughs> iconic commercial. Right, yeah, yeah, we right. still be looking at this today. Right. Not surprised he ain't sneak back there somewhere in the corner. You got to watch it. <laughs> right, right. With that, um, give us your fondest memory uh, um, about the time, or even now, in terms of all that's going on. What, what really sticks with you? Wow. Uh, you know, the Super Bowls, you know. Um, wow. You know, I didn't get to travel to Super Bowls, you know. I understand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just being, watching your dad on TV, mm. you know, playing in the Super Bowl against the Vikings. And wow. Against, uh, you know, because he played two Super Bowls. He played the Vikings and then he played the Cowboys. I'm going to say the Cowboys was the, the famous uh, tight end. He dropped Drop. the ball mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Uh, but the, <laughs> the Vikings game, man, was so... <laughs> Just special. You had man. to bring that up. Right? I know. <laughs> oh, right. I had that NFL films image just <laughs> burned in <laughs> me. <laughs> right. He but, dropped uh, the ball. Yeah. 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 But the 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 Vikings was like total domination. Yeah. By the defense. I mean, I want to say they held the Vikings to like 129 yards of total offense. You and know, that, that Super Bowl was at Rice Stadium. Right? No, actually, it was in Tulane Stadium. Okay, Tulane Stadium. Okay. Tulane okay, Stadium. Okay. They played in Tulane. It was a college. Yeah. It was a, co it was a college stadium. Uh, and, and and all his uh, uh, everybody in Jasper, because you know my dad is from Jasper, Newton, Jamestown area. Mm -hmm. They all drove down, and you know it was, it was a fun <laughs> Jimmy, time. Jimmy Wilson talking about that was Jackie Smith dropped that Hell, ball. Jackie Smith <laughs> dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, we was in trouble, man. We was in trouble, and so we thank Jackie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we repeat, repeat, but you know, but but that wasn't their best season. As a defense, their best ah, defense, their best season as a defense was the '76 season. Mm. Okay, I mean, you looked at the last ten games mm -hmm. of the '76 season; mm -hmm. they were nine and one. They only allowed 46 points, and they had 36 sacks. How proud was your father, Ernie Holmes, in terms of the swag? Uh, he was very proud of the swag. He used to visit Texas Southern all the time. I mean, uh, one of his good friends and classmates was Kelly Burroughs. In fact, you know, uh, in 76, they only allowed three touchdowns in the mm -hmm. last 10 games. Mm -hmm. And one of them was a 69-yard touchdown pass to Kelly Burroughs. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all the people, right? Of all the people, right? <laughs> you know, but Double O uh, and my dad are close uh, and, you know, real good friends. And uh, it's, it's just – you know, proud being, you know, Ernie Holmes' son. I mean, it's just, you know, when I walk across campus, you know, it's it's starting to get out because it wasn't well known. Right, it wasn't, right. but uh, it will. It'll, it'll appropriate it, and yeah. you did it the right way. Yeah. In terms of letting it come to you, getting right. the information, right. and I'm glad I could play a small role in right. what that is. Uh, but I'm saying that you, your family, deserve this. Thank you. So please enjoy it. Um, and, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it Most definitely. Uh, uh, Most definitely. Through, through what you have. So I really appreciate it, yeah, really man. honor you. Right. Any th last words that you want to say? That we man, do? thank you, man. Uh, this, this, he's a man on campus, uh, uh, Dr. Cavell. Oh, my God. He, in fact, they Very need, much so. They need to change this from, dean to, from Dr. Cavell to Dean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, uh, he's an asset at the university. Uh, the sports management program at Texas Southern University is type of line. They I concur. Just, uh, right. They studied from an HBCU perspective, and which rightfully so. You are at an HBCU. Exactly. You should be studying from an HBCU perspective. So thank you for your friendship, and thank you for 
you know, we're good friends, man. There, there's no, oh, yeah. no, no secret no around campus. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which gets us in trouble sometimes. Yeah, but that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a whole other yeah. story. We'll go to, this is Dr. Kavir yeah. inside the HBCU with my friend, Dr. Holmes, talking yes. about his father, Ernie yes. Holmes, that has been inducted to the SWAC Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Yes, uh, some ways would say over overdue, but yes, everything comes at the right time. Yes, so this sir. is the right time yes, sir. Uh, with uh, your daughter being able to really yeah. understand a little more of it. Right. Let's think about that in terms right. of that. Yes. And make sure you tell your wife hello um, and appreciate her support yes, in sir. terms of what she does for you and yes, just sir. us allowing us to do the things right. in terms of university to push things most forward. Definitely. So most tell definitely. I said thank you. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. This is Dr. Gaville inside the HBC Sports Lab. We're going to take a break as we get into you. hope you enjoyed that interview with Dr. Holmes talking about Ernie Holmes going into the SWAC Hall of Fame. Yes, we'll sir. do that this evening, and then we'll get a little chance to check on the SWAC. I mean the celebration bowl with the SWAC champion Jackson State as well as South Carolina State of Meech, MEAC champion. And we continue to see that grin from Charles Bishop and the little frown from Roy Evans. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're going to give it to you. This is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, uh, we'll see if we can line up this uh, the interview shortly, but let's take this break and we'll get right back into it. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slowburn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge, it's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place. A space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival. You can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Carlos Brown Show and Black College Sports Network. Online at www.mybcsn.net and on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Sugar Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good 
Mangos Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Mangos Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We have one final interview we're probably going to give you, another special guest. But this gives us a chance to, to get in the game a little bit. Mm. Um, and as we do that, I, I wanted to ask you, Charles, uh, are you starting to feel it? You, oh, very much so. I mean, Zafir Kelly, when he stopped through, Jablonski Green, and then Kendra Flowers, these are guys that uh, – when you're facing them, the, the statistics just pop in your head immediately. So, you know, it's like. Yeah, you know, I saw you <laughs> flapping through your thing. You're like, yeah, I got so many. Hey, I, I just like, need to get yeah, to them real quick. These, these are, this is going to be a great game. And then uh, when you talk about the tradition of South Carolina State football, uh, it is it is interesting because the, it looks exactly like Jackson State football. Yep. Jackson State 17 SWAC championships. Uh, South Carolina State 18 MEAC uh, championships. Uh, there is, I talked with Coach Pugh about the tie in from uh, James Big Daddy Carson, former head coach of Jackson State University. Yeah, I'm so glad you South got Carolina that on State. the record. Yeah, so uh, I, it is a, a team that uh, both teams, they, they in, in so many ways, they really look alike. I just Bro. want to say, fam, you're going to be here next year. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just want to get that on the record. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you get that on the, re- that on the record. Now, you he, get that now, on the record. He, he, has to get through, he has to get through Jackson State to get here. But, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, well, the, the problem is like you got to do a whole swag thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like swag is, you got to beat the champ to beat the champ. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. That's true. Much that's true. To them, to them uh, yes, sir. I like that. Yes, sir. As we do that, let me talk about the MEAC donates nearly 400 toys to local charity ahead of Cricket Celebration Bowl. That's Cricket Wireless Celebration Bowl. Um, first ever Toy Drive Challenge in partnership with Toys for Tots has officially concluded. Uh, beginning in early November and running through the first week of no- December, MEAC Memory Institution set up drop sites on campus and athletic events and children toy donations ahead of the holidays. Uh, let, let me say this. That, that is tremendous. Uh, Kate Johnson. Uh, her class. Uh, shout out to Kate Johnson and her class. They are uh, enjoying uh, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBCU Sports Lab. So oh, uh, man. shout out to, to the class. Kay. So we appreciate you guys. And, and, and Kay is so uh, beautiful in terms of her heart. Mm-hmm. She was wondering if we're going to do something live. We got it last minute and made it work. Mm-hmm. But she was going to uh, allow us to do it uh, in an apartment that had looked over the city. So that would have been a oh, great wow. lands- l- been landscape. So, cool. so I, I really was thinking about that. But as things would have it time didn't allow us to put all it together mm-hmm. so i always want to make sure we celebrate Thank Kay, you, Kay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way she um opens up her arms and making sure that we get it in mm-hmm. and then sharing the love with the students well i yeah. tell you that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing so this matchup this matchup mm-hmm. let's talk about this matchup you know it's time to kind of get to to where the rubber meets the road yeah now. Mm-hmm. charles um talk to the players obviously we've talked to Jackson State multiple times so mm-hmm. now we got a chance to really talk to South Carolina State so it worked out in a lot of ways mm-hmm. um, anything in this game that really has your focus more than maybe you did as we talked about this earlier in the week they touched on various data points and I think uh, uh, Coach Pugh even said it uh, when you talk about the, the different styles of the leagues. Uh, the MEAC is a, a, a league that uh, they like running the football, and we had one of their running backs, uh, Kendrell Flowers, uh, who uh, stopped by to talk to us. Uh, it's going to be incumbent, I think, on the Jackson State's defensive line. Uh, Oh, much, right. much as they've much as they've done all season, you know, is they they've got to be able to stop the run, and uh, if they are uh, fortunate enough to be able to limit uh, South Carolina State on first and second down, then you get to see that Jackson State defensive line. You get to see that defensive speed. You get to see those guys. How much in this game do you see as a defensive game, and how long do you see it as a defensive game? If so, um, I, I think it's very much going to go very much into the third quarter in terms of being a defensive game. Okay. Uh, and we've talked about how, how there is a point 
where Jackson State at some point kind of wears you down a little bit. So that will be a very interesting thing to see, you know, uh, when we get into the fourth quarter uh, from a stamina standpoint, where will South Carolina State be? I know we saw in the championship, championship game with the special teams play. Mm. They've been rolling these highlights, top ten plays of the uh, Celebration Bowl, mm -hmm. and it was intriguing to me. I saw that some kickoff returns, punt returns. I think in this game, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to be focused on Jackson State, but you had that same opportunity with South Carolina State. Very much so. I'm really fascinated. Early on, yeah. as they're filling each other, and it's more the defensive game that you talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued uh, who may pop that. Special teams play. That's going to be a very interesting thing to watch uh, in terms of special teams play. Who can make that play? Um, but and like a block I, field goal, yeah. or whether, you know, a punt return. And and South Carolina State has one of the best uh, field goal kickers uh, in the MIAC. He's ten of eleven thus far on the season. But uh, and I've said this schematically. I thought Southern did the best all season of of taking that third rail away from Jackson State, the special teams rail, because Zay Bolden is all swag. He is he sees the field different in terms of being a kick returner. We saw that in the swag championship game. He was able to break one. Warren Newman, he's broken uh, multiple punt returns uh, in terms of uh, getting deep in uh, uh, the opponent's territory. So they're both dangerous return men. Uh, but Southern was able to take that away. They kicked away from Zay Bolden. They kicked away from Warren Newman. And they made it a defensive matchup. Do you see that on the opposite side? Special teams in terms of Jackson State kicking the ball to South Carolina State. Anything in their special teams in terms of them breaking something? Or, you know, because we look at it one way in terms of what yeah. Jackson State, but what about the other way in terms of what your special teams – Field goal kicking, those concerns. How now, does that look? field goal kicking is a, is a definite concern. That has not been a strong point of Jackson State whatsoever this past season. Uh, when you take a look at it, uh, they have just not been consistent even on extra points. Uh, from a kickoff. You and think they go for two a couple of times? Or are you going to try to? I think. Or how long? I, I, well, I was, I, if you, you you mess around and miss an extra point with Dion, he, he's liable to go for two from, from, from there on out. So. <laughs> <Right>. uh, but <laughs> but uh, the reality of it is, I don't. Jackson State has not given up that big play on, on kickoffs or giving up that big play on, okay. on punts. So uh, that's uh, just something that we haven't seen. Coach Allen Ricard uh, has been tremendous. So that's a, special but teams. that's a key thing to watch. It the is. fact that they, they do not have the habit of giving it up. Right. So that's something that you want to continue to see. And it's certainly, unfortunately, if it does happen, you're talking about something that can really throw um, a dynamic change in the game. Exactly. So those are things why I say, you know, keep your eyes on it because there's always – the multiple facets of a game that come mm -hmm. in there in terms of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I mean when you take a look at at South Carolina State uh, offensively, they have some 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 game changers, some mm -hmm. game breakers. We talked about uh, Shaq Davis, uh, thirty eight catches on the season, seven hundred and sixty nine yards. Uh, he is averaging twenty yards a catch in the NBA. I really like that you bring Shaq Davis at because you've talked. Some people talked about the fact that he may not have been as consistent as he was, but I think part of that was his injury. Mm -hmm. which may help that the five weeks or so helps in terms of some of those folks that may have some nicks. Yeah. Um, does he play to the level we've seen him play at, or does he shift away? That matchup uh, between corners, do you – He's going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's going to get some, some definite one-on-one -on -one matchups. Who do you see him matching up against? Uh, Both of them? Or uh, just one of them? Well, uh, in terms of I think you, you'll see uh, Nugget Warren from time to time on him. You'll okay. see uh, I think uh, he, he's one of Jackson State's better cover men. Uh, but one thing that we know about <laughs> Jackson State's defense is they lead those corners on the island, and they let that front seven do what they do. So that's the point you always make. Yeah. Is the time there. Yeah. It's and the this is another case that we've seen with John Pass. You may not necessarily get to him in terms of putting him on the ground, but can you get to him enough to maybe make him speed just him a up. rush, just yeah. a little bit, speed him up. Yeah. And um, you're not – not to be disrespectful to South Carolina State, but you're not playing Kill Glass, who we even saw that could speed it up. He sure. up yards, but he did so much down to other folks. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as you talk about Southern, that was pretty solid at the quarterback position, at least early, maybe mm -hmm. left some things on the table there. Mm -hmm. But that's something to watch, too, is, is, is yeah, you may have a big-time receiver that can make some plays, but can you get the ball to him to make those plays? Right. Will you have that time to do that in this particular matchup um, so that's interesting. And, and that's one of the things, you know, in talking to Dennis Thurman, sometimes it's not 
you know, it's it's the pressure. It's the, oh, it's the, the perceived. Cost, yeah, the perceived pressure. <laughs> Seeing ghosts. <laughs> you know, if you get enough hits on the quarterback, they will start seeing an extra yeah. pressure. And you see somebody. that. That's, that's yeah. I mean, that's a great defense, but that's endemic of the game of football. Yeah, exactly. We see that at the professional. You exactly. Tom Grady, exactly. most people think is one of the greatest of, uh, of all time, certainly arguably one of those. You put – Pressure on him, and he talked about that in games. He's done that. Sure, but, you know he start to see ghosts. I, I think you see are. I, I, I think you are. <laughs> I think for this little stretch of uh, period now that you you kind of see Dak Prescott going through that where ah, he, yeah, he's yeah. seeing extra pressures from yeah, somewhere because he's point. you know yeah, quote unquote point. in this slump. Yeah, yeah, this yeah this fatigue. Yeah, exactly, really exactly. So let's talk about the young gun, Shador Sanders at the quarterback position, mm. getting all these accolades. Mm -hmm. Um, tell us about his demeanor. He doesn't seem to me as a person that that's going to let these accolades get to him. He seems pretty focused. Yeah. Am I on point with that, or am I missing uh, something? He is the oldest acting nineteen-year-old I've ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> they, his nickname is grown for a reason. Uh, he is ex ridiculously mature. Um, uh, just from the wow. standpoint, the doc, that uh, wow. he's neither too up or too down until you know the game is over and you you kind of see that whatever come off his shoulders um uh and where he really kind of opens up uh, we've had an opportunity with the pregame show to you know we're, we're trying to do these uh, in-game interviews and and he whenever you know we come to him it's always you know uh minimal i'm locked in and when he's locked in he's focused in on what he needs to do and you know there was you know a couple of occasions where he's like not right now you know i'm i'm in, i'm I'm locked in. I'm, I'm trying to get something done. So, you know, and it's completely understandable. But, I mean, he that is the it's sort amazing. of sort of personality that he is. Yes, yeah, amazing. Uh, where he's uh, not too up, not too down, but he's I, uh, I would say in a lot of ways it's a gift in itself. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. I'm sure um, he's had a, a certain level of training that sure. allows him to get there. But some of that is innate yeah. in a lot of ways, too. Yeah. Get a little further in that when we start talking about the, the cast – of characters, for lack of better words, surrounding him. Mm. We know we got big time receivers. Mm -hmm. To me, the question, if there's been a question mark, and this is not just to pick on somebody, but this is really to go in the game, is it offensive line? Sure. When they can get it done, mm -hmm. and they have pushed some teams around, mm -hmm. they can put up the numbers sure. in terms of wide receiver, or they can run the ball. Right. It's in championship game. Yeah. He matriculated and kept pushing. By the end of the game, yeah. <laughs> he had 100 plus yards, yeah. right? He started slow. I saw it in a couple other games. You've seen him put big plays, timely plays. Yeah. If he's able to get that time, where do you think? You think they're going to do a little more run, pass? You know, obviously the words want to be balanced. Is, right. Is that the case? Or is there something that you may have heard that they're looking for that they think they should exploit, need to exploit, or must exploit to get this victory? Uh, I think – Consistency has been okay. uh, a theme with the offensive line all season. Uh, they haven't has been as consistent as you want them to be. We've seen times where they have uh, opened up holes for, for Jackson State running backs. They've had mm -hmm. you know a, a couple of games where they've rushed for over hundred yards. But they've also had a few, quite a few games where they haven't gotten a sixty yards rushing. Mm -hmm. So consistency has been a huge thing. Oh, and yeah. then another interesting stat with regards and this is to this one game that you really need to be. Consistent. Yeah, this is one game you really <laughs> need to you know lock if you in. You go find the game that you go in. Exactly, one. and then uh, I think a, a very interesting stat, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Shador has been sacked uh, close to uh, maybe over thirty times. If I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, I have to take a look at that stat again great, but he's, he's been hit a, uh, a few times so yeah. uh the big thing is is protecting him if you are so that, that goes him. two ways when you talk about that one his ability to bounce back when he does get hit and still mm -hmm. make plays but it also um means that to some degree they could be susceptible mm -hmm. uh of getting a sack he had those two interceptions in that southern game where they put a little more pressure on it sure so you're right it, it that dynamic um can south carolina state do that yeah in such a way. And the question is, is can they do it with the front four, front seven, or do they feel like they're going to have to bring somebody? Yeah. And you know against Jackson and, State, and that's with the wide receiver, exactly. if you got to do it with somebody, yeah, if you got to bring extra pressure, have some, guess and what? And traditionally, mm -hmm. all season long, this young gun, this freshman, true yeah. freshman, mm -hmm. player of the year, FCS, sure. swag freshman of the year, right. he showed that he'll find those receivers. And, and I think that speaks to how good Shador has been uh, as a freshman. Uh, his resiliency uh, to not always have 
uh, a running game that he could rely on uh, to for the number of times that he's been hit. He's still only given up, you know, five interceptions thus far on the season. He's closing in to over uh, 30 touchdown passes. So uh, his resiliency is something that has really jumped out uh, with me with regards to watching him up close this year. And like I said, he's never too up, never too down. He's always somewhere right in the middle and always focused on the next play. So I think that goes a long way toward, toward where this Jackson State football team has gone this season. Yes, uh, as I return this message um, and trying to look up some additional things, I did want to talk about NFL draft prospects to watch during the Celebration Bowl. Um, James Houston, you know him very well in terms of seeing his motor and things like that. Mm -hmm. They talk about uh, Houston transfer Jack State from the University of Florida as a graduate student in 2021. Linebacker racked up 100 tackles, 10.5 tackles for a loss, 4.5 sacks. Three forced fumbles uh, in four seasons with the Gators, but uh, coming to Jackson Stadium just has wrecked shop. Mm -hmm. um, um, 47 tackles, 14.5, four forced fumbles, and a sack in his final collegiate uh, regular season with Jackson State. Talk a little bit about him and why he's special. Uh, James Houston has been tremendous this past season mm -hmm. for uh, Jackson State. Uh, yeah, his quickness and his get off has been second to none, and he's closing in on, on, on Jackson State's uh, single season uh, sack record uh, held by uh, Fernando Newbreed Smith. Uh, and who, interestingly enough, uh, that is how he got to Jackson State. Uh, he and uh, Fernando's uh, son are best friends, so uh, that's a, a very interesting uh, look at you look know at how they work. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But when you talk about James Houston, uh, he has just been unblockable at times and then he's so athletic we got an opportunity to see that in the swag championship game for him to start up field and to um, make that a uh, huge interception that kind of salted that game away but uh, you're talking about his athleticism and all season long doc he still wanted to go back to his linebacker position <laughs> although he you know he's been uh, they moved him from linebacker to defensive end to take uh, advantage of that speed that he has and he has found something coming off the edge Keep Corbin the third. Corbin is a senior wide receiver at Jackson State and the go-to guy. In many people's opinion with the Tigers offense, Corbin spent five seasons at University of Houston before transferring to Jackson State 2021. Um, wide out tally, 2,364 yards, 159 reception, 19 touchdowns. And six year collegiate career. Talk about him. Yeah, in so many ways, Keith Corbin has been a safety blanket uh, for Shadour. Uh, mm. uh, you take a look uh, uh, when Warren Newman, uh, especially, went down for a couple of games with a knee injury. Uh, Keith Corbin really stepped up, and he works the he works the middle of the field. He, he gets those uh, tough little uh, dig routes and things of that nature and yak yardage. But uh, he's a guy who can get deep on you as well, and he really takes advantages of of those matchups uh, on those uh, nickel DBs that are uh, trying to cover him. Uh, man on man he, he and a lot of times he wins those battles last one we're going to go to the south carolina state side the kobe durant uh is senior defensive back south carolina state you talked about the pair of them earlier um and but uh he's the MEAC defensive player of the year you don't always get that from a defensive back so you know he was talented in terms mm -hmm. of what he get done durant had a stellar career with south carolina state including 37 tackles so not only does he get in the mix in terms of defending what our receivers and getting interceptions, but he can do it in terms of making tackles. He led the league in pass defense, defended with 14 and tied for second in interceptions with three. Two of, the, of those interceptions came against Clemson Tigers, team that was nationally ranked in September at that time. He proved his ability to play and could transfer against tougher competition. What do you think? Thoughts on Dakota Durant? Bonafide pro prospect. You talked to a lot of uh, uh, of. I, one of the things I, I've talked to uh, Jackson State assistant coaches this past week, and uh, they were tremendously impressed by his uh, his cover skills. So uh, you mentioned it, three interceptions tied for uh, the lead there uh, in, in the in the MEAC, uh, 14 pass breakup. So, you know, he's getting some work. He's getting some action, and he's making plays. So uh, there's going to be some interesting matchups uh, with him going against uh, Ma Wagman, who is uh, 6'4", and Shane Hooks, who is 6'5". And then you'll, you'll see Keith Corbin move out there as well, depending on the formation. So mm -hmm. he's going to get plenty of opportunities to go against other potential pro prospects on exactly. this national That's why I love you know, TV stage. So this yes. is going to be a phenomenal opportunity. It's not one-sided in terms of these pro prospects. They're all over exactly. the field. Some of them may be a little younger now as we talk exactly. about defensive end. Brownski uh, Green in terms of what he might bring to the table, mm -hmm. which a lot of people hadn't quite talked about because of his age mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But uh, they're, they're all over the field. Yeah, red shirt, two, sophomore. Two very proud programs in yeah. terms of history. Um, and so they're not going to give an inch. You're going to play through this game and get it done. So you're going to get a chance to earn this. 
uh, where you want to earn it on the field. On the field. With that being said, thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBCU Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. I want to thank Charles for really putting up the time and getting up. I don't know if y'all know the labor of love, uh, the, the multiple hats he plays and how deep he gets in there and what he has to do. Uh, making sure he happens and he puts up with me <laughs> pulling him around and like a change like man let's do this and he just says yes uh thank you for Roy Evans in terms of always finding a way he was on the road getting things done and he's in multiple uh, facets but he finds a way to make it happen so I want to do that shout out again to Dr. Uh, Holmes Roger Holmes mm-hmm. for being here and supporting me in multiple facets to make this happen and giving this shout out to Kevin Granger. He's not in here, but he always provides me a lane and support that I can't get in a lot of places. And, and why a lot of this comes true in terms of the support I give Texas Southern University. Shout out to them. Again, I want to thank you for listening. Shout Dr. out to the, to the lab listeners as well. Kate Johnson, thank Chuck you. Hunt, uh, uh, Lonnie well Shaw, said. and Jimmy Wilson. Thank you all as well. So. Well said. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. I always want to shout out those lab listeners. You all the reason that we do this and put in this extra energy and time. Um, look for us. We're going to try to give you one more on Sunday to close out and, and let you know our thoughts. We'll try to go at a regular time. We might have to switch it up, so just stay with us. We'll try to get you that as much as possible. We'll send some stuff out there. We'll pass on the torch. Check out the pregame show. They'll be giving you some live stuff in in action. they got some practice stuff coming up today that they'll be a part of. More importantly, you know what they do at the game. Uh, pre-game information, in-game assignments as well, uh, the pre-game show. So they'll give you that. With that, we're signing off. Check out uh, Brian and AD. They'll be bringing you some stuff, right, uh, in terms that they normally do. Um, so I guess they are staying behind the scene, putting in some other works. I thought they were going to sneak in and do something. So um, they'll give you some after uh, review for sure in terms of what's going on. B.J. Jones, uh, the crew, with my JBN, um, so download the apps. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Again, that's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Dream big. Well, inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter. Got to say that fast. Facebook, YouTube, inside the HBC Sports Lab on YouTube. Do you have a time that they can... Or at least a general time that they need to start checking in to see when the pregame. Yeah, going. um, uh, we, we are looking at a, a window probably about uh seven p.m. um d- this evening. So we'll we'll that'll see. That'll be Eastern time. Uh, that'll be uh, actually a Central time. So oh, Eastern central. time will be a little just a little later. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that work. And this is they're going to be in the host hotel. So yeah. If you want to yeah. check this out? I want yeah. to kind of tease yeah. that out. You yeah. Get, well, like, yeah. yeah you going to get a vibe. Well, Jackson State is having a, a meet and greet uh, at the Hilton Atlanta tonight, and uh, what we are looking at uh, is uh, really showcasing our fan base and uh, showcasing our fan base is forever. The sonic boom of the South. I might exactly. slip my toe in there, but that man, they <laughs> go them folks. They're will, staying at the they hotel. Will, they will take care alumni, of you. They do yeah. like to pass around the stuff. Exactly. A lot of alumni will be there. So we're looking forward to uh, putting that uh, uh, show out there for our, our Jackson State fan base. And I tell you what, they will be here tonight in oh, Frozen. They're already here, man. Uh, getting right, exactly. They're, they're already here. Yeah, they're already here. They're already, already here. Cut that out, man. Cut that out. <laughs> Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on YouTube again. Facebook, YouTube, Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Roy? Letcher. Dismissed.